Uh, this is Terry House, uh, a minister of the gospel. I just want to share something that the Lord's put on my heart. I was just speaking to him about it, and it's been months that I've been looking at this. Uh, I believed in the Lord as a child, loved Jesus as a child, uh, and then I separated myself from God, denied him as an atheist, a dope head, or Rastafarian, whatever. Tried everything, but when I when I came back to the Lord was from you know without going into details, I you know it was pretty dramatic. And then when I finally came back to God, I said, Lord, you know if you can do anything with me, here I am. And He said, I want you to go to that church there on Sunday. Well, you know, I, I learned something and I, I surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and his control. Well, you know, in John chapter 3, Nicodemus goes to, the, to our Savior and asks him some questions. And Nicodemus was a religious man. And he was wanting to know how to find God, how to, how to have this relationship that he was seeing and to understand what he had learned through the, through the Bible that they had. And Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God, nor can he enter into the kingdom of God. Now, this was something that was hard for Nicodemus to understand because he didn't see how you could be born again. It was an obvious thing he said. But, but Jesus said to him, that which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. Well, you know, we understand now, and we've been taught our whole life, especially in the South, that you must be born again. But because there, it seems that there are a lot of Christians or people who call themselves Christians who just automatically take that on and say, well, I'm born again. I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. I got saved. I walked down the aisle. But there's something missing there seems to be. Well, the Lord's been reminding me of this for quite some time about how early on, right off the bat, he said, go do this, go here. He said, go to that church on Sunday. I went to the church on Sunday. Uh, I remember just the next week uh, after I was still, uh, uh, I didn't think nothing about it, but I was still smoking pot with my friends, but I was telling them about Jesus. And, and I felt like I, after the, I came out of the house where I'd been telling all these people about Jesus, but they were smoking pot. And the Lord said, I don't want you doing it anymore. And I was naive and I said, why? And he said, because it gets between, it's uh, illegal. I don't want you going to jail. It says, uh, it, it gets between me and you and it's a God. You thou shall have no other God before me. And I said, okay. Well, you know, my life as a Christian has been that of surrender. When God says do something, I just want to do it. I mean, I've not always been uh, faithful at doing that, but as a Christian, what I've tried to do is when I believe God tells me to do something, I try to do it. I mean, my kids can tell you and my wife can tell you there's been many a time that we felt like God's telling us to go here or do this or say that, and we try to be obedient and do it. And he tells us more. Been many a time, I remember one in particular, me and my wife was coming back, leaving the store, and my wife said, we got to go back. Uh, I, I believe I'm supposed to go back, and uh, that lady's upset, and I'm supposed to give her this $10. And I said, well, okay. And we went back, and she gave her the $10, and it made a difference, and, and she got to witness to the lady. And, you know, uh, at that time, it was a big thing for us. I think it was the last $10 we had, you know, but God provided more. But over the years, the, the Lord's had me go places and do things. And we were out in past in Arkansas at a place, and God had me go out in the middle of the night and stand at this filling station, you know. And the lady came up, and the Lord said, that's the one I sent you here for. And he told me to put a New Testament in my pocket before I went. And I said, ma'am, and I did this at a distance because it was a lot of people around, but it was late, two or three in the morning, you know. And I said, God sent me over here, and I believe he sent me for you. And the lady just came right over and, 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 and started crying and said, 
I'm on the way to get my sister, and I'm telling my brother about the Lord. He's not a Christian, and I left my Bible at home. And I said, well, God had me put this in my back pocket. And I pulled out one of the New Testaments and handed it to her and prayed with her. And here we are praying, and she's crying, and she gives me a big hug. And I know her brother thinks I'm she's crazy. But, you know, I don't know what happened after that, but I, I would imagine maybe your brother got saved, and who knows, her sister might have got ministered to. I know she did. But that's happened so many times. You know, as a born-again believer, you don't operate in the flesh world. You operate in the spirit world. So the more you say yes to God in obedience the deeper your walk with the Lord comes. Now, there are so many people that I see, and I know personally, that I believe love God, but they've fallen back into things of the world, into sin. You know, that which is flesh is flesh. You know, the fleshly carnal, first Adam wants to live in sin. But if we're born again by the Spirit, we want to do the things of God. First Thessalonians chapter 4 talks about us going on to be sanctified. Uh, in Corinthians, he said, He who knew no sin became sin on our behalf, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Now, the problem is, is that's not about something we do. It's something he did. And when we get truly born again, we hear him and we obey him. We walk in the spirit. You know, the Bible says that, uh, you know, the uh, there's so many scriptures in that area, but I can think of a lot right off the hand. But, you know, uh, those that are led by God, these are the children of God, led by the spirit of the children of God. Look in First John, it says you can't, do the things of the world and walk in the sins of this world and participate in the things of the world and love God. Now, my, my thought is this. How did you come to God? Were you born again? Did you surrender and repent of your sins and say, Lord, make me a new creature Change me, Lord. I'm yours. You know, if we go to God and say, I'm yours, whatever you want from me, then he will start changing you, and he continues to change you. Your whole Christian walk is about growing in him and learning to say yes to him over and over again. So for those that I know that I don't know what their relationship with God is, but I know They've claimed God, and I've seen Jesus on them. But they keep falling back into the things of the world, and they don't have any victory. Are you truly surrendered to God? And does he reign and rule in your life? You know, Nicodemus was asking a question, and Jesus was giving him a very clear answer. You've got to be completely born again. See, salvation is, is something that happens to us, but it's happening to us. We're being changed. We know that when we see him, we'll be changed in a twinkling of an eye. But if you had a continual change in your life as a Christian, and if you've had a setback and you've fallen into sin, this is what I want to say to you. Repent. And just say, God, I'm yours. Make me, mold me. I just, I see so many people out there that call themselves Christians that don't even have any testimony of ever saying yes to God. And as a believer, having testified so many times of what the Lord has done in my life and talked before Christians in groups, when you talk about God, I believe God told me this or God told us to do this, you get these looks from people like, God told you? He doesn't do that for me. Well, if he doesn't do that for me, 
He says, my sheep hear my voice and they won't follow the voice of a stranger. If you're not hearing his voice, maybe you didn't really get born again. I'm saying it's important, it's necessary to waste a life saying you're a Christian and be religious but not have a relationship is a terrible thing to do. And I'm not saying this completely right, but I'm saying this this way because I know right now there's some brothers and sisters that continually struggle with sin that are going to look at this. And I tell you, look, you got to say yes to Jesus and surrender to him. If you continue to sin, you're separating yourself from the love of God. You need to say yes to God and say no to the flesh. It's a, it's you just the more you say yes to God, the easier it is. The more you hear Him, the more He speaks to you. So stop and say yes to God and get born again. Uh, thank you.